Hey, folks. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, thanks for showing up, uh, especially late on the first day. I know you guys are probably tired from all the excitement, so we'll, uh, we'll start to get through this. So uh, today's talk, this afternoon's talk, is about uh, using Pivotal Cloud Foundry uh, across Azure and Azure Stack for hybrid applications uh, and kind of what that looks like from a deployment standpoint and a user interface and user experience standpoint. So the first part that we're going to talk about is Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Uh, it'll be a high-level overview of what it, what it is for those of you that don't use it, uh, and a refresher, a refresher for those of you that do. And then we'll talk a little bit about what it looks like on Azure, and then how it, uh, it looks and feels on Azure Stack. Uh, we'll move into a little bit about hybrid use cases, so you know, using applications both in the public cloud as well as your private cloud. And then we'll move on to hybrid solutions, right? So what does PCF look like on both Azure as well as Azure Stack? So a little bit about Cloud Foundry. It is a platform as a service. Uh, so a platform as a service is a little bit different than infrastructure as a service, and it sits at a higher level of abstraction. So it's closer to delivering business value than necessarily technical value. So one of the great parts about Pivotal Cloud Foundry is that it's enabled really, really well with Azure, right? We have full support for all of the sovereign clouds, right? So that's Azure Public, uh, Azure China, Azure Germany, GovCloud, and then Azure Stack. Right? So Pivotal Cloud Foundry can actually be found on the Azure Marketplace. Right? So if you're really curious, you want to go try it, log in, give it a try. It's not a big footprint. You guys will have a great time. One of the, the great points about Cloud Foundry as a whole is that it's primarily open source. The majority of Cloud Foundry is open source, and you can find it uh, through the Cloud Foundry Foundation, which Microsoft is a, a member of. Right? So I think ultimately the one point, if you were to get away from this, about Cloud Foundry is that it's a really, really easy way to get raw code into the cloud. We can take your raw code, and then we can make something of it in production in 30 seconds or less. So why would you run Cloud Foundry on Azure, especially if Azure already has its pre-existing services? Well, the great part is, other than the fact that you can push raw code to the cloud and we can make something of it, we, uh, we partnered with Microsoft to write service brokers. And these service brokers are great ways to consume Azure first-party Azure services, right? So instead of going out and deploying Azure Redis and trying to manage that instance and its lifecycle, uh, as well as credentials or you know Cosmos DB or things like that, through our service broker, what you can do is you can tell Cloud Foundry, hey, I need an Azure Redis instance, or hey, I need an Azure Cosmos DB instance, and it'll go provision one for you, manage its lifecycle, as well as their credentials for it. All you do is consume it. The great part is Cloud Foundry has two ways of running applications. The first is through the application runtime, which is pushing raw code to the cloud. And the other is the container runtime, which is our implementation of Kubernetes. And the service broker works for both. It's, it's a really great experience. Microsoft has done tons of engineering work to make it an awesome user experience. So kudos to them. And the great part is it's extendable. So if you go and you are a Cloud Foundry user and you want to consume Azure first party services that aren't available in the service broker, it's super extendable. And you can go through and use user provided services and be successful in that way. Spring, so one of the great things about Cloud Foundry is that it has first, uh, first party support and native support for Spring Cloud, right? So if you want to run Java on Azure as well as uh, you know, Spring on Azure, this is the, great, the right place to do it, right? You know, we also have first class support for the .NET framework, you know, going back several revisions, and we do support uh, awesome frameworks such as uh, WWF or WCF and then .NET Core. So we do have a library to, to use Spring with .NET, and we call it Steeltoe. Uh, we donated Steeltoe to the .NET Foundation uh, late last year, and we've you know, we found great traction and great responses with customers through Steeltoe. So if you want to use Spring and .NET at the same time, Steeltoe is the way to go. One of the best parts about Cloud Foundry is that it's a polyglot PaaS. So whether you're writing in Node or Go, .NET, Java, you know, Fortran, right? We have a customer that's running Fortran. Uh, we can execute on that and help you be successful in ways that you want to be successful. Cloud Foundry uh, all but requires cloud native applications, right? So if you don't know uh, what you want your application to look like in the cloud, but you know you want to modernize, Cloud Foundry is the right place to do it, right? So one of the best things about Cloud Foundry, and this aligns really, really well with Azure Stack, is that you write your code once, and you can push it everywhere, right? So when you, if you push code from you know, deployment A to deployment B, no difference, right? It's awesome. So the focus with 
Pivotal Cloud Foundry on Azure Stack is all about consistency and sameness. So it's all the same libraries, right? So it's the same CLI, it's the same SDKs for both Spring and .NET, and it's all of the same templates, right? So if you are defining your, app, your application manifests for you know, Cloud Foundry on Azure, defining it for Cloud, uh, Cloud Foundry on Azure Stack, it's identical. There's no difference. You know, when you go to log into the Pivotal Cloud Foundry UI, admin UI, as well as uh, application UI on Azure Stack, it's identical, right? All the portals are the same. All of the APIs are the same. Nothing is different. And that's the best part about this, right? So if you're trying to you know, manage hybrid applications both on uh, private hardware as well as in the public cloud, what you can really do, I'm sorry, <coughs> what's awesome is that it's the same experience and the same consistent experience. So one of the great parts about the work that we do uh, with Microsoft is that we're very, very focused on um, look and feel, right? If you go to use Cloud Foundry on Azure Public, it should feel identical to PCF on Azure. You as a developer should not know that you're deploying your application to Azure Stack versus Public Azure, right? And if that doesn't happen, come talk to us, right? We want to make sure that your vision is identical. Sorry, your experience is identical. All right, so let's talk a little bit about hybrid use cases and kind of some of what those are. So let's say that um, you are deploying your financial application to a country that has high regulations about um, where data has to reside and how data can be managed within your country. Right? Let's say that Indonesia or Germany or something like that. Right? The great part about Azure Stack is that it allows you to come in and drop your applications on Azure Stack, getting that great Azure experience, but you get to meet all these regulatory uh, compliance and data sovereignty rules, especially, especially right off the bat. Um, let's say that you have a ton of data that is on site and you want to make sure that you're serving this on site data in a fast and reliable way, right? Azure Stack is the right way to do that. You know, you can come in and take the same Azure models that you have uh, in the public cloud and do it in the private cloud. The last major use case for uh, hybrid applications is in both edge as well as disconnected solutions. So let's say that you want to take your awesome Azure experience and you want to go through and deploy it where Azure doesn't currently have uh, a market, right? There's no region uh, for you know, Azure in Antarctica, right? Let's say you have a workload in Antarctica that you need to do. Well, the great part about Azure Stack is you can bring Azure Stack, drop it in Antarctica, and now you are able to be successful with your applications in Antarctica, right? So when we look at the kind of grand scheme of hybrid application deployment models, the best that you'll ever be able to do is close enough, right? When we look at, let's say, you know, region A on the left, uh, in the public cloud, you have your standard application uh, pool that talks to, you know, a backend database. And it, it's awesome because it works. You know, you can take this, and now you want to scale from region A to region B. And when you go to scale, some of the problems that you're going to run into are consistency, right? So operators will always try to take you know, a running application and make it identical in a new region. But the challenge is configurations are different. There's different service offerings. Um, you know, maybe the library that you're the, a library of a product that you're using doesn't support that region because it's new and it's online, right? There are all these challenges that come with it. So another one is software versioning. Let's say that you have a new version of your application that you want to publish to your primary region. Well, now that you've Publish your primary region, let's publish it to your secondary region. How do you do that in a, in a consistent way that is easy to manage and you don't have any problems with in the long run? Well, really, there's, there's not a whole lot of easy ways. But one of the great parts is with Cloud Foundry, you can really make that uh, a great experience. So because the, the focus that Pivotal and Microsoft have together with Cloud Foundry is um, sameness and consistency, we've made sure that the experience that you have for hybrid applications is the same, right? So if you're deploying to the Azure public cloud you know, with, with Spring and Cloud Foundry, we want to make sure that the experience that you have in your Azure Stack private cloud is identical, right? There's nothing's different. Everything is the same. So it goes back to that original mantra of you know, write your code once and push it anywhere. 
And some of the great parts is Azure Stack has compatibility with ExpressRoute. And so when it comes time for a fully managed solution, what you can look at doing is using Azure Public Cloud with you know, Cloud Foundry on, running on top of it, and then Cloud Foundry with Azure Stack and using ExpressRoute to tie them all together. And the great part is you get one congruent network all the way across. All your firewall policies can be simplified. Um, you don't have to make weird exceptions for applications because your deployment model is identical, right? The great part about Cloud Foundry is you make it easy to deploy applications because we handle all of the behind the scenes magic for you. Well, if you can take that and have that also in your private cloud, why wouldn't you want to do that, right? You can, you know, if let's say that you're starting with your on-premise, uh, your on-premise cloud because you have on-premise workloads. Well, dropping Cloud Foundry in there gives you a great developer experience off of the bat, and then taking that to the Azure Public Cloud is really, really simple. It's all the same operator experiences. It's all the same developer experiences. When you tie it together with ExpressRoute, it makes management super simple. DNS, firewalls, you know, network pathing. It's, it's all the same, and it's wonderful. We've had a a great time with it, and you know we would love for you guys to get out there and try it and provide feedback for us. So, when you when you look at kind of this as a whole, you know what do your takeaway from this is? Well, you know first it's easy for both a developer and an operator. It's easy for a developer because you know it's the same Cloud Foundry experience and it's the same management experience through Bosch. Uh, it's fast, right? Pushing code is the same. If you're pushing code in Azure Public Cloud with Cloud Foundry and you know, you're deploying like this, you're going to get that same exact experience uh, on-premise. From an operator standpoint, if you're pushing um, you know, new services through Bosch to your developers, you're going to have that same exact experience for uh, both a speed and consistency standpoint on-premise, right? Pivotal and Microsoft both recommend it uh, as your developer experience for Azure Stack. The reason is, you know, it's maintainable, it's very maintainable, and it's really consistent, right? If you notice nuances between, you know, Pivotal Cloud Foundry on Azure Public Cloud and Pivotal Cloud Foundry on Azure uh, Stack, we, we would be really surprised. We'd love to talk to you about that, right? Because, you know, our focus on this has been making sure that everything is the same, it's identical, it feels good, and that your happy, easy developer experience kind of continues on premise. So that's all I got. Um, you know, we would love to hear your feedback. Um, have a great rest of the build.